everyone. Thank you for joining us for this webinar on harnessing the true profit potential of digital print, brought to you by Kentech and HP. I'm Megan McCarthy, editor of Africa Print. I'd like to introduce our panelists, Willie McLaughlin, HP Indigo Business Development Manager from Kentech Imaging Systems, who will be moderating the webinar. Paul Reagan, Director of award-winning UK creative design and print house Effie Berman in London. Hakan E. Khan, HP Indigo Solution Consultant, Tamir Hatiba, HP Indigo and Inkjet WordPress Country Manager, and Alan Shakam, Africa Regional Manager, Indigo and PWP. Just some housekeeping rules. If you have a question for the panelists, please post these in the question section. You will have a dedicated question and answer session after the panelists' discussion. The chat section is just for general banter, so please keep the questions to the question section. And please also remember to take our polls in the poll section. So, Wendy, I'll go over to you. Thanks, Megan. And um, hi, all. Welcome to the free webinar, um, Harnessing the True Potential of Digital Print, and in association with Africa Print and HP. So, Megan, thank you very much for the opportunity. As Megan introduced me, I'm Wendy McLaughlin, I'm Business Development Manager at Chemtech. And so, thank you to each and every one of you for taking the time to join us today. So, I mean, let's be honest, um, in terms of the change in the world, um, over the last few months, it has been seismic. Um, with a global pandemic, a national lockdown, and um, moving into our new normal, how do we harness this true, true profit potential of digital print in these trying times? So, as the power of digital print allows us the ability of um, agility and responsiveness, I believe these have become the new normal for us. And um, so over the next 45 minutes, with the assistance from our business leader presenter, Paul Regan of Effie Berman, who will share his experience of how, experiences of how Effie Berman has managed to gain customers and leverage profit within the business during these unprecedented times. So welcome and thank you to Paul um, for your time. I know Paul's based in central London. Um, so thank you, Paul, and thank you to the HP specialists um, in our panel. Um, so I'm going to start off with after discussion um, with a question, and hopefully it's an easy one. Um, Paul, clearly the last six months has been challenging for a lot of businesses. So has there been any positives within those six months for Effie Berman? Yeah, I think so. I think basically we've stayed open, which is really, really important. We haven't shut at all, and uh, the message has gone out there that we're open. We've, uh, we've been involved in a lot of um, campaigns that have helped people. We've been involved with the health service. We've been involved with creating a poster project uh, to enable creatives at home to express themselves, how they're feeling. So we've had a, a lovely campaign which created a lot of social media. But what I found was really crazy was we had a lot of people contacting us because um, a lot of people have, 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 there's a lot of printers have just closed in central London and some of them are little shops that people go, either big brands go along to and just try to get, you know, average print done on crappy printers, to be honest with you. And mm -hmm. uh, they've started to come and find us. And what they've said is when this whole project's over, they, they're going to come back to us because, you know, okay. the technology we've got and the ideas we've got and, and the geographical position mm -hmm. we're in. So... A lot of people have been knocking on our door and finding us where normally they wouldn't. I think a lot of people have been too busy just to go down the road and to use what they're used to. And um, and I think it's just helped us. And being, being so creative, uh, people have got time to, 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 to share in the technology we've got. So it's been good. We've had lots of people coming in, which is bizarre. Fabulous. Yeah. Fabulous. So living in this world of volatility and uncertainty and, you know, the complexities of life and ambiguity, how did you leverage the digital print in support of your business growth? Um, I, I think for, first, firstly, obviously, we're, 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 um, we, we speak a lot to the end person, the creative person. So, mm -hmm. um and the, and the communication where people couldn't come in here over the uh, over a period of time, we can very very easy uh, create one or two proofs, send them out to them, which will enable people to carry on being creative in this crazy time. Uh, we've been very generous with um, with allowing people to come in and press pass and and film everything. And I think overall we're we're just a big open door and. Um, through this crazy time, it's um, 
it's just enabled people to stay creative. There's a lot of work out there, actually. There's a lot of people yeah. out there that have been wanting to do print that's not for an event or not urgent. Uh, people have been wanting to produce books. Now they've finally had time to finish their book. There's people out there who've been wanting to do campaigns. Some, a lot of people actually are wanting to t change their branding and they've had time to do it. So we're seeing picking up of work of, of people that have been trying to do stuff that haven't been able to do it because life just goes on and it's mad. And, and of yeah. course, what, what are they going to do? They're going to go to companies that have the best equipment, that have that share in ideas. You know, I, 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 wanna, I don't want to receive quotes. Every printer out there wants a quote. I don't. I want to. I want to actually talk to them before they generate this quote. I want to be yeah. involved in in the jobs and to hopefully advise or at least at least share in the production of the job. So, I I think we've been in a good place, and I think where lots of companies with regular work the tap's been switched off, where a lot of our work is spontaneous, uh, it's increased. And, so we've been very fortunate. As you as you mentioned, the quote factor. So, you know, when, when a lot of companies have actually gone into this um, panic and survival headspace, yeah. um, you know, how did you, how did Effie Berman ma manage to move from that headspace to become an innovative profit making focus? In fact, I have it in good knowledge that Effie Berman managed to retain the turnover during these lockdown months. Yeah. Very I, different to a lot of other printers out there. Yeah, I would say what we, what we actually, we, we reduce the staff because we've got something called furlough in the UK where the government will pay up to 80% of salaries and and it's gone on for months really lucky uh, so the staff came right down to about 20 percent of staff but mm -hmm. our turnover stayed at about 60 percent so mm -hmm. you know we haven't got 100 percent of the work but also uh, strangely the property market has has, has, has gone up um, people yeah. are buying properties and we we do we actually do a, a bit of work in, the, well, a lot of work with a web to print solution in the property market. So I think that whole web to print solutions really helped us. We've also created two more web to print solutions during <laughs> lockdown that we probably wouldn't have done. And yeah. Um, yeah, so we've reached, also reached out to people. Uh, one of the, um, well, we've, do, we've, we've done two. We've done one with students that all the colleges shut down. So all the graphic colleges, the photography colleges, they all shut down. So what we basically did, we created a, um, a project where you could order uh i think it's five posters for like 20 dollars pounds whatever you want to call it and they could be folded in any way and it was just you know drop your file in it showed you how to create your file and it gave the students something physical to hold so we've been in lot, lots of orders there also a, a magazine called flora magazine uh there's a lady the editor decided to go out and it's just about to um come out this issue go out and tell everyone to go in their garden and take photographs and create their own wrapping paper which oh, once brilliant. again we we wouldn't have done that and yeah. i then think well if you can create your own wrapping paper take a picture of your dog in the garden and you can create five posters of your dog at it you know so it's just we've started to do things that we've always wanted to do and it's started to generate business and um publicity really so yeah i mean you, you come you come across so creative i mean it, i mean we all we all know that the effie berman is the is a creative professional print service provider yeah but what makes you special you know what why why are people coming back and knocking on your door i mean why why yeah. are you the right choice and what what makes you so different because we've yeah. got to remember we've got to remember when someone creates something from an art point of view you know people go to college they come out of college they then work in agencies and they work anyone that's actually put in an artwork together really cares about it yeah so if you're yeah. going to go and and get it printed and someone actually for instance you know someone can send a quotation out to three printers one of those printers has looked at the pdf and goes back to them and said that is my quotation but i've looked at your job and in actual fact it's, it's really cool. So, you know, I love to work with you. Someone spent yeah. three months creating that artwork. All of a sudden, the price isn't the key. The pro it's, it's about someone really cares about what I'm doing. So printers have to get closer to designers. Two, three hundred years ago, if you was a printer, you were seen as a key player in the, in, in the community. You, was, you know, you was a craftsman. And we've got to get that back. And we've got, yeah. to, we've got to allow our clients to, to just almost... On, when they're when they're creating something, when you go print, it lands on an indigo, or lands on something really good, right? Yeah. Uh, rather than print and it lands on the desk, uh, Mickey Mouse machine at the end of your desk, we've got to close the gap. 
we've got to stop allowing too many people in between you know um so is it imperative to have a creative team in house then or do you only collaborate with agencies and brand owners directly no, no we, we we communicate with everyone from a student yeah. to you know the uh, you know the queen might pop in one day it doesn't matter she get treated the same as a student <laughs> she might not actually you might do it. <laughs> might bring different cups and sources out but uh you know we 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 um we 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 just communicate in a way that um we we just we we just really just want people to come in here and and regardless where they're coming from we just want people to really get back to love in print and i think we are once upon a time you know we all wanted to make um presses so they were so consistent so consistent and that's great right we like consistency and the press your press is very consistent but we also want it to be unique. You want to be able to see some really cool stuff. So do you need an in-house design team? No, but do you need to understand your clients? Yes. And I, I always say when you buy an Indigo, there's a box that you never deliver to us, right? You, 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 you sell it short, like, you, you know, where's my box with a creative person in it, right? <laughs> you know, you've got, to, you've got to give us someone that comes with a press. So, and, and where you've got a load of old, sales print guys you know go and find someone down the college that understands creativity and they might have a tattoo or a beard or they might you know, <laughs> be a bit scruffy but you need to put them out there with those sales people because yeah. you know that you need the connection better so we're known to be an open house our sales team is one and he is not a salesperson and that's me uh, and it's all about communication and sharing ideas and not being a typical printer and saying, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. It's about saying, well, I don't know what we can do. So let's yeah. give it a go. Let's give it a go. Yeah. I, know, I noticed a very interesting project um, on your Facebook page. It was, it was, um, uh, it was a designer who cre created a book. Um, I think it was called In Isolation, The First Wave. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, a typo, typographic book. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how, how did that project come about, and what was what what has been the success rate of that project? Okay. So pre pre lockdown, a guy called Os Oswin came in with the London College of Communication. It used to be called the London College of Print when I went there, and I still call it the London College of Print because it shouldn't <laughs> change its name. But of course, it goes to show you you got the London College of Print, and now you have got London College of Communication because there's other ways of communicating. So Oswin came in, or the college came in and brought Oswin, who's a tutor there, and also a publisher, and just a really sort of nice, cool, floppy air glasses, you know, real good character, turns up on an old crappy bike. Okay. And um, he, he, he went and did this, um, he went and learned this programming to make every, every, everything different. So when he came to us, we tried to tell him about mosaic and collage. And then he showed us what he was using, and uh which is more powerful actually but, but bonkers and we we ended up doing a book for the college uh there we go every cover is different right how brilliant right every cover is different and then uh then i said to him you know and it goes on and on and on but you know they're, 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 they're... sorry i'm not showing you the front cover sorry you know right every cover is different yeah now so we did this project with him and it, he was blown away by, you know, what we achieved. Um, the, the, the crazy thing is on, on there as well, I won't go into it, but you've got, you've got invisible lines going all across with uh, invisible yellow ink and you've got silver dots everywhere. He didn't ask for them, but I said, it's not going to cost a lot of ink. Let me do that as well. So there's little secrets in there and it's fantastic. Anyway, so Oswin came along, we did this project and all through lockdown, he kept popping in. And all through lockdown, he started each day journaling, doing a scrapbook. Phenomenal. Yeah. And each day he's been, he, in the end, he created this and, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. And it, <laughs> they're flying off the shelf. I think he's giving some away, but they're flying off the shelf. So we had a lot of these type of projects along with. Uh, you know, where 250 designers decided to create posters. You know, I'm okay. Yeah. And look, you know, we don't know what the cat's going to do once the uh, human goes back to work. And, 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 you know, we have 250 creatives have gone online and created posters. So after lockdown, we got 
250 potential new clients, or let's say 50 of them already clients. And it's it's 250 sheets of paper for a, for an Indigo 12,000. I don't, it didn't really cost it, anything. And, and we filmed it. Yeah. Oh, you filmed it? Now, that's interesting. Tell us more about the filming. Why, why would you have well, thought well, about filming it for them? But, so if you came to us and said, I've got a really cool project and I, I'm... Um, you know, I want to print with you and we go through, you know, the process and what we're going to do, I will always turn around and say, well, you can film it coming off the press if you want, because they can, right? And yeah. people people film their work coming off the press and then they see it being chopped on the guillotine and then they just roam around the firm watching things being done. Um, so, yeah, and the other thing is we've got an in-house photographer here. He's independent. I mean, the guy's, the guy's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And uh, we give him a space here. And in return, he photographs anything for us really well, beautifully. And then we just give those images to the client if they've done a nice project. So we're actually crazy because we're turning the, we, we, all we want people to do is create a physical piece. And now we're making it digital at the end and giving it back to the client after the physical piece. You did, and then you're they just throw it all over social it. media. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's just providing that extra little bit of service. It doesn't actually cost you anything, but it's just no. that it's a wow moment for, for, for your customers. So, yeah, and the, the, the knock-on of that is, you know, the social media with their images on goes out. And, of course, everyone wants to know who's printed it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, there was you've, you've kind of like answered my next question because the next question was going to be, well, what is the good formula, you know, and the approach do, do, do you use? when trying to embark on a new project or a new customer or, I mean, does it simply fall in your lap? Because clearly, I mean, what you're actually okay. doing for your customers okay. is actually so, helping. So not only are our customers understanding what we can do, and I wouldn't say what we can't do, but what we may be able to do, because what we've got to remember is there's lots of things we haven't done and lots of things no one's done. Um, yeah. And, and I think um, we work really closely with the paper companies. You know, the, right. the more unusual, lovely papers we use, the better things are because the job's going to be a nicer job. And those paper companies have what's called backsellers. They go around to all the creative agencies, all the colleges, all the art galleries, all the museums, everyone, all the banks, everyone. And of mm -hmm. course, people say, can you recommend someone? And they're pretty safe if they recommend us because we stick to their papers if we can. So we've got... <laughs> You know, we've got teams of people out there that are just that we just partner. We don't have suppliers. I mean, you guys aren't our supplier. You're our friends, right? And and we work together. So yeah. it's just word of mouth. And I think really it's about honesty, isn't it? It's about you know, and and the best thing of all is when something goes wrong. You know, the first thing you say is sorry. Now it might not yeah. even be your fault, but you're genuine. Yeah. You are sorry. You don't want it's it to go wrong. So, yeah. so say sorry, and fix it, and then have a conversation. So. And I also believe when someone presses, can you go and print that? And they say, it's okay to print. That's a lot of pressure on someone. So they've got to know the person that's printing. It's looking out for them. If there's a mistake, they're going to support them by the mistake. Yeah. And it works the other way. We, we did a job for the v &A, the Victoria and Albert Museum, which is a beautiful museum in London. And we foiled it. We used hot foil and, and we sent it to Claude. And he phoned up. He said, the invitations are lovely. I love them but you've used the wrong color foil. <laughs> but, so we said, really sorry, mate. Let's do it straight away again. He said, no, no, no. He said, it's better than the one I chose, right? That's, that's your client you want because he knows yeah. full well if there's a spelling mistake, we'll support him. So yeah, just, sure. I suppose this whole conversation is about getting closer to your client and, and your actually client, yeah. Yeah. start loving print again. Yeah? yeah, start being proud of yourselves because... It's, it seems to have got to a stage now that if you're in the pub and someone says, what do you do? You try not to say I'm a printer, <laughs> right? It's got you're to a creative person. Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not creative, right? I just, I'm, I'm privileged because I'm surrounded by all these people, you know? I mean, I'm forever telling every creative because I have a love of craft beer to, to create cans, right? Beer cans. You know, sorry, you told me not to stand up. <laughs> That's absolutely fine. It's good to see these samples. Every beer can is different, it's right? It's different. Brilliant. So you, the power you know, of you one. Get your yeah. hobby going as well, your craft beer and your personalization. Or your, yeah. I, I just want to say something regarding personalization, right? There's personalization and uniqueness. 
right? And I think we've got to start pushing the uniqueness. And it's it's a very easy thing to push. So I don't know what your next question is, because I know I really do talk a lot. So <laughs> I, I can show you uniqueness whenever you want me to. Well, you know, go for it, Paul, because my, my next question was about selling digital. And you, you mentioned something about the power of one as in one print, but we've also got one person and, uh, as, a, as a sales team, and that's you. And um, so I want you to elaborate on that and say, well, how do you actually sell digital? And then it probably goes on with your creative um, samples and, and the sharing of what Epipurman and, and can actually do for okay. your, your customers. Yeah. So, so gonna, let me show you a few samples. And yeah, go for it. These samples have come out of maybe not the client asking for them or the job coming out of, but the client communicating. Mm -hmm. So, and this is some of the stuff I just showed to students because I think it's really important that students understand that um, you you need to print well, you, you need nice materials, and you need nice design. And and if we don't respect one of those, then then it's not a not a good product. But if if you look at this, right? Sure. I'll just show you actually, full, full blown, yeah? Pr printed on the 12,000. Yeah. You know, of course it's vibrant in color. Beautiful. Actually. Okay, so if, as you notice the background, if you take the, so someone spent, I don't know how long creating this illustration. If you take the background color, the yellow, and put a palette of color next to it and throw it at the indigo, then you're gonna get this. Because all you're doing is swapping the colour out. It's amazing. Right? And you haven't had to really do very much. Simply stunning. So that's how you've got to get your clients thinking. And it costs you actually no more money, right? Because it's, you've got to, that pre-press scenario, you've got to start being a bit generous with it. You've got to start saying, this costs no more money, right? So what's that? Different color um, car, power, car passes. Yeah, it's black ink on the indigo, right? It's, so it's yeah, different black ink on different color paper, right? You know, look at this beautiful, look at this beautiful cover, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a cheap process, really, because it's black ink on black paper. Mm. That's very yeah. effective. Yeah, very effective. And if you look at, um, if you buy yourself a sewing machine and sew it instead of stitching it. Then you can, you know, you can sew it. Might not be able to see it here, but oh yes, yeah, we can. Yeah, and, and, you know, you need a, you need the odd old machine around. You know, I, the students are very confused when you explain this is CMYK, right? Yeah. And as as a, if you imagine that being a piece of packaging, so there's a, a product in there. It's really cool, right? I mean, there's no two ways about it. Yeah. But if you use the same ink, it's Beautiful. just the paper, right? Yeah. But the clients don't know that. Yeah. And, and it's just trying to get the clients to understand, um, you know, a really cool image. It's the same. It's just different paper. So okay. I think we start need to start sort of utilising paper better. And um, Paul, was that, was that just um, a single colour as well on that paper? Was that just black ink on that coloured paper as well? Yeah, let's, be on, yeah. let's be honest, it weren't even a colour, was it? It's black, you're right. Black yeah, it's just black yeah, and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And there, there was a huge variety of those. The, the other thing, um, simplicity is, is really key as well. If you look at this big, big, yeah. A3, yeah, that, I don't know, some of you might know this brand. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And it's just a, you know, it's just a folded poster book. It's for a really cool brand that started off as a surfing brand, I think. You yes. Know, you can pull it apart and it's just held on by this. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, if that was full of safari stuff or images of Africa, I mean, I'd be, I'd be, you know, buying one. Um, sure. There is, there is two things worth, um, worth talking about, actually, if, if I'm not taking up too much time. And I think... No, carry on. There's two things that have happened over a period of time that's made a huge difference, right? One's white ink. Yep. Yeah. So basically what white ink has done is enabled us to print on any paper you like, i.e. orange sure. paper, white ink under an image, and then you print the image on top. Yeah. Or it can be a little bit more quirky where you're using different colored paper and you're printing white ink. But white ink is tremendous. 
yeah. So white ink's good because all of a sudden, as you can see there, all the different colored papers. So white ink enabled us to print on all colored papers. But all of a sudden we went home one day after an installation at F.E. Berman's, we came back and we thought someone had dropped a new press and it's because of your silver ink. Ah, right. now, that was going to be uh, one of my questions. So it's fabulous. Fabulous that you mentioned it. Sil silver ink is as cool as this, right? So I don't know if everyone can see that, but there's silver ink uh, and black ink. And it's on white boring paper, like really boring, like just a mm -hmm. silk or a gloss, nothing too amazing. So, you know, the silver ink's great. And of course, if you've got silver ink, you've got every metallic. So now we've got every metallic. So, and, so just, for, just for the yeah. audience, but when, you, when you mention a metallic color, then um, you, you're basically saying that you're printing silver with um, like a CMYK on top? Yeah, so, yeah. Right. so si silver ink. Yeah. Okay, every image I'm now gonna show you is silver ink, but it's got CMYK on top. Yeah. Or just CMY, maybe. Yep, or just CMY, or unless you, if you want a dark silver, Wendy, you need a bit of black. Sure. Right, so everything in here, and look, look at that lovely gold. Right, am I am I just sort of trying to encourage you all to come to London here? I think so. <laughs> yeah. It does look quite good, I must say. I'll, I'll swap you. Uh, so the, the, the point is, silver ink has now enabled, has given us metallics. And, and everyone gets a little bit excited. They want it to be more and more glossy, right? You you know, especially um, certain parts of the world. And in actual fact, HP are trying to make it shinier and shinier. It's shiny enough. Yeah. In actual fact, on uncoated papers, it's really amazing. It's so much better than an offset. So sil silver ink's been great. Although I did have a very peculiar conversation with another printer who said to me uh, that they can't wait for the gold ink to come along. <laughs> so I, ju I, just, oh, yeah. I just left it Did you it put them right there? Yeah, oh, did I, you? No, okay. no, 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 no. You don't, you, you don't put them right, do you? We're the only ones who do all the metallics in London. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, look, none of these are really possible unless you get help from creative people, right? Sure. Look, these images, that's the colour paper and that's white ink and black ink, yeah. right? They're, they're true, yeah. honestly. So, Truly spectacular. I, I, I'm not sure how far away this is from some of the audience here. Um, and it's a very slow step, but it's it's about being somewhere that people can actually come a, a over and talk to you and, and, and you can start changing your ways from other printers that really just drop something in and something comes out the other end. And I think I started talking about, you know, if you if you're going to if you buy Rolls Royce. Yeah. Yeah. Then if you drive it like a Rolls Royce, then you no one else is really going to compete. I know there's yeah. other cars, but sometimes you're going to have to drive it in traffic and it's just, you may as well have a Ford Escort. So there's going to be times that you're running your press and you're just running standard work and you're, you've uh, taken it off the offset and you think, right, I'll put it on the Indigo. But I think we got to a stage that we, we throw so many alternatives in. So if it's a thousand copies on an offset press of something like a 32 page book, we we'll still try and put it on our Indigo because we we'll probably say, well, do you want them numbered or, and we won't charge them for numbering them because yeah. we don't need to, or do you want to, you know, change a few substrates or I think all this is about communication, to be honest with you. Oh. you know, this, I'm sensing that the freedom of creativity is, is an integral part of the success of Epi Berman. But, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, do you, do you have a, I mean, do you allow, allow students to just pop in um, agencies access um, to the office in the full print shop at all times, or do they? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah absolutely. Do you have a space, or we've got, a huge, we've got a huge space here. We're in central London. We're ten minutes mm -hmm. walk from Tarbridge, and I really, I mean, students will be sitting in this environment along with, say, some creative director from a big brand. Yeah, and that you, you find the big brands really like it when they know you're you've got students around. Yeah, they were a student, right? And, yeah. and the really interesting thing, and this is really important. So if you go to Unilever and you've got a creative art director at Unilever, everyone wants to get to know that person because they're at Unilever. Yeah. Yeah. But by the time they get to Unilever, they're probably married with a couple of dogs, a Volvo estate and a mortgage. <laughs> right. You would have been better off finding that person when there was a three man band in an agency in the back streets of London. 
right? So go and find those people, and then they those people would become the person with the Volvo, but they still remember yeah. you guys. And I think, you know, go into the colleges and talk to the students and let them share. There was a girl here yesterday for at least two hours, and um, she, she, she walked out of here and just said, I, I knew I loved print, but I love it even more. And I could, that happens all the time. And don't think it's because of me. It's because of the ability to do one print on yeah. a huge variety of medias. And it's the ability to um, in, enjoy working with people. I it, don't think it's all rosy here. You know, don't think, oh, lucky Effie Berman's in London. It's tough. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really tough. And, and people <laughs> want to undercut you. So you have to be different. First, first thing you need to do is make sure your press has got lots of options on and you utilize it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it can be a workhorse. It can be better than a lot of the, a lot of the competitors, but it also can be uh, a really amazing creative magic box. And if you want to use it as a magic box, then you're going to, well, you need to allow people to come in and, and, um, and sure. play with it. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, it's, it's, Epi Berman's embraced um, digital print for oh, over 26 years, 29, probably close to 30 years by now. But, but what has happened over the last two years, which has made the massive difference to Epi Berman? And, and also, can you share your, your, a little bit of your journey with the digital um, and particularly yeah. with HP, um, because you know you're an independent person, and you're not, you're not, you know, you're not just pushing HP, no. but you're talking about your journey. But um, you know, sh share that little journey that you've had with um, with digital printing over the years, and you know, well, the, last, the, the last two last, years, the, mm. the last two years, to see a build up of momentum of us really, um, really understanding what we're doing, right? yeah sort of really understand it and, and actually believing in ourselves because we're you know when when you don't have a lot of sales people and, and we, we're very quiet and people stumble upon us but i i honestly believe that we're we're pretty okay here uh so over the last two years that's built up i've also seen a lot of people like everything um they want to buy a coffee from the nice coffee independent shop and communicate they want something that no one else has got they might even want to repair a cricket bat. You know, we, people have had enough of same, same, same. So we started mm -hmm. over the last two years seeing people being much more creative with print and really treasuring print and wanting something to hold in their hands. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really helped us. So and, and we're, you know, and where a lot of the online printers uh, are in a bit of a price war, um, we're not. Yeah, we're sure. not in a price war. Uh, we, 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 we will help people, students especially. Someone getting married hasn't got a lot of money. Uh, but we're not in a price war. You know, someone might say you're expensive. And fine, okay, well, we're, we're more expensive than someone online, but you get a lot more. So, so I think that's helped us over the last two years. And um, over the last... So you said, what's your HP experience? Well, we're lucky enough to have an Indigo experience that then ended up as an Indigo dash HP experience. So 26, 24 years ago, 26, 25, 20, we bought an Indigo, you know, and it was, it wasn't very good. It was streaky. <laughs> it was, it was all the things that we wouldn't put up with and it was nowhere yeah. near offset, right? It was, it's crap really, but it wasn't because it was magic because you could print something different every time. Yeah. So, and you could do little short runs and, you know, and then it got better and better. And then all of a sudden it became, especially on uncoated papers with big color gamuts, it became better than, I would personally say, better than offset on uncoated papers. I know everyone mm -hmm. out there might have a difference of opinion and I, I respect that. But I'm the person that was a scanner operator with a drum scanner onto film, then digital, and then we didn't even have the drum scanner. We had everything digital and then the cameras became digital. And I'm the last person in the queue to admit that digital's better than conventional. But the cameras in their own right, the, the vinyls, yeah. you know, the music. So, so all of a sudden the Indigo, I think it was about the 776, three series three from then onwards, all the problems gone away that you that yeah. you really didn't have anyway, but we're all being a bit fussy. And then, then we had the Rolls Royces. 
Um, so that whole journey has been about uh, geographically being well positioned, being a big open door, having the technology all the way through and being known for the company with the technology, but most importantly, listening to our clients. So, you know, often you need, you really do need just to listen to your clients. So the tw last 26 years has seen all our pre-press go to zero. We had offset because your presses were not big enough. Mm -hmm. The offset's gone out the door because the 12,000 arrived. Yeah, we're in very close contact with a company down the road that do offset. And that's who we use for all our offset. And that's all they've got. They've got an offset press and they're fantastic. And it's necessary to use that offset. And I love going down there and press passing. We've also evolved where we have sewing machines instead of staples. We can sew things. We've got foiling in-house. We've got additions to digital. So yeah. at the end of the day, you cannot just rely on amazing digital. You do need to be able to foil. Sure, sure. Yeah. Embellishments, um, etc. Yeah, embellishments. And um, we need to hold everything in-house as much as possible. We've either got a big department where all the crap goes, right? You know, people have got to pick and pack and do all this stuff. But it's really important. And also, yeah. you know, people have got to realize your finishing department is one of the most important departments. But actual fact, when they mess up down there, it's not the end of the world because it's on an indigo. You can just run a few more sheets. So, and, uh, and, and how have you found the sort of um, relationship with HP Indigo during this journey? I mean, have they, you know, yeah. have they have they been with you? Have they joined you on this journey? And I mean, I know that you've had a number of presses throughout the year, so they've obviously been there with you. But how, how have you found that partnership? Um, it's a big family partnership. I have just noticed my charge is not plugged in. I'm 2%. So I know I'm not meant to do this, but I'm going to plug it in. And then I come back. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so no problem. Well, well hope, hopefully um, Paul can come back. He doesn't lose his um, connection in two, in, within 2%. Two and while, while Paul's doing that, I actually just wanted to find out from the panel if there's any um, um, questions that have been raised that need to be answered live or have the questions from the, from the attendees actually been answered. There are a couple of questions. Uh, but uh, I guess we can uh, answer okay, them at you the want end. To answer, well, Paul's back. That's fine. So, yeah, because of, okay, we'll answer them at the at the end. Then, Tamir, that's fine. Are, are you back? And I think mosaic, mosaic and collage. I think Paul could explain like it very to, well <laughs> with yeah, examples. No, I've just got to go and get it. This is terrible, but at least you can see it's live and real ones. You know, so on and so forth. So I'm just going to. Uh, I'm just going to take a wander over to another station that's got a nice little socket. And also, I suppose that just gave you a breather from listening to me. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not a problem. So, um, Timir, what is the question with regards to um, collage and um, um, mosaic? mosaic? So, basically, you know... <laughs> How does uh, it work? Uh, you know, what are they? What 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 do they work? So we we can talk about it now a bit while Paul is running around the plant uh, in power. hunt for uh, power. <laughs> so uh, and, and Paul, I mean, you 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 can take over whenever you want, but. Uh, Really, you know, uh, Mosaic started with uh, a customer uh, request. So we did a campaign for. Um, for Coca-Cola, so I don't know if you guys were all aware of the share a name uh, campaign where we had 150 names of the most common names in each country on the uh, basically on the wraparound. I'm sure, uh, yeah, uh, um, uh, uh, Wendy has some, but uh, we did a, a campaign for Coke, which we, which was very very successful and you know created a huge buzz in Coca-Cola. And after, I don't know, uh, like a year, they, they came back to us in, in Israel and uh, the brand manager for Diet Coke wanted a, you know, some, to do something in marketing. They were losing market share and, and they asked us, guys, what can you do? Sure, Coke was great, but what, what can you give me uh, 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 to do something different? And we asked them, okay, how much real estate of the 
Diet Coke bottle can you give us? And she said, take everything, just leave me the logo. And then we developed the software, which basically a human designer creates a, temp a template, a vector template, and the software for each bottle or each instance, basically, it will zoom to a certain area of the template, it will scale and rotate, thus creating you know, millions of different options based on the same family of colors, shapes, and, and so forth. So it looks like it's the same family, but each one is unique. Um, and so that's what we did for uh, Coca-Cola. Yeah, you can see it there uh, with Heineken. And, and, yeah. and today we have hundreds of brands all, over, all around the world using this technology um, to, again, to, to create really amazing campaigns. Um, sorry, Tamir, I just want to actually chat about this one. Obviously, the most famous one in, 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 in South Africa is, um, so if you can actually, um, if, the, if the people, the delegates on the, uh, can see that this was the area that we chose that was going to be the mosaic um, um, patterning or the variable image, um, you can see it up here as well. And then also on, on this has actually got a, a, where the name of the elephant, um, I'm not sure if you can actually see the name of the elephant. This elephant is called... Yes, I'm getting old. It's called um, Mitzi. Um, so this one's Mitzi, but this is one bottle. This is Mitzi's bottle of Amarula, and this one is um, Atalia's bottle. And you'll notice that both elephants patterning in the background and at the top of the Amarula um, um, label or name is completely different. Now, this was 400,000 of variants. So it's 400,000 of one, of one print. And that's, that's mosaic. Um, collage, on the other hand, um, where Mosaic works on a template and a seed pattern, as one would say, collage uses elements um, where you would actually choose how many elements in a certain area. So you could actually have chosen, you know, at the back of the label, you could have chosen a certain area that would have maybe smaller little elephants as, um, um, as a variable, and then you choose the elements as a um, as as variable versus a seed pattern as variable. So that's essentially very, very quickly the difference of uh, between mosaic and collage. But um, very, very happy to speak to people out of um, out of this uh, webinar if um, if we if we want more details. Um, Paul, I see you back. Uh, just had a cup of tea, you know. Went to the bathroom <laughs> and I went down the pub, but I'm back. Uh, Good. So, Good. So I, I think the key the key is really. What we're talking about is how can you make everything unique without spending days producing different artworks, right? So we all want uniqueness. We want to walk. We want to pick something up and be the owner of one. Yeah. And it's quite interesting because I see it's it's if you do a thousand Coke bottles and they're all different, you know, it's it took us a long time to realize that, that it's not zero zero one. Zero 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 one of a thousand, zero 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 two of a thousand. It's one of one, right? It's, it's one. Yeah. And it's really cool, and people love one. And and it, with the students coming in, I rip one up, and they go crazy because they know I have explained it's one, and then I rip it up in front of them, and they go crazy because that's how important it is, right? Yeah, that's it. They know it. there's that's no other one, right? So sometimes yeah. by, you know, if you threw your bottle of coke out the window and it smashed. It's gone. You won't get it back. It's really, it's just created. So anyway, the way I see these these unique uh, softwares or ways, I showed you an example of just changing coloured backgrounds on a piece of material Wall wrapping paper. Yeah, yep, wrapping paper. paper yeah. You could call that whatever you like. Um, just changing papers makes everything variable. But mosaic, like you say, if you take a massive, massive pattern, uh, this is part of a pattern. Right, mm -hmm. this is wraps. These are wraps. They go around a box. Okay, they go around a box and, and sit around a box somehow. Right. But you know, every single one's different because it's it's different sections of one big seeded file, one big illustration. And then you give it you give it uh, rules. You say, I want you to crop it. I don't want you to enlarge it beyond this point or reduce it beyond this point. And I want X amount, right? Now, on top of that, you can change colors and stuff. I mean, this this happened to have silver in, which is I was silver just going to ask you. Yeah, I was just going to yeah. ask you if that put silver ink in it. it looks that's, like all, it. that's on a really uncoated paper. That's all the silver ink off your press. And that gold, 
which is actually really gold. The background, not the foiling. That sure. gold there is actually uh, silver with with uh, yellow and a bit of magenta and maybe a little bit of black. But uh, you know, and you can keep seeing it. It's really cool. Um, so Mazag's about cropping, rotating, and taking areas from a big illustration. So if you look at your elephant, you could get yeah. ten thousand elephants, and they could all be from a different part of the. The, the one illustration. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's now, exactly what. The thing is, once you got them ten thousand or whatever, ten million elephants, you can then put it in collage. You can move them all around wherever you want. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, and, yeah. and they work together. Or or collage is simply an image like this, where this was for Smirnoff, and Smirnoff, red Smirnoff is Smirnoff twenty one. Took twenty one times to distill until it got to a point of them being happy, although I'm not very happy about it. I don't think it's that good. Uh, and my, by the way, you might have had all your bottles, but I've got mine. Look, the same person yeah. with a different hat on and yeah. a different jumper and a different background, etc. There was 21 different characters. And what what's interesting about that one, Paul, is the fact that it's actually 21 different characters on a poster on a shrink sleeve, on a label, yep. it can yep. be on any kind of application. It's not, it not, doesn't necessarily need to be um, commercial, which is, a which is really, really exciting. And, and these are, these are one of ones, right? So yeah. each of these can be on a bottle, but the heads can go with different hats. And once yeah. you've set up 21 heads and 21 hats and 21 jumpers and 21 bits of background, and you start running them, uh, and, and someone says, how many can you do? Well, I, no one knows the answer because you just got to times 21 by 21 by 21 by 21. And I think there's even more than that. Um, it's worth saying that this particular job, it's really nice, right? So that poster is one of one. It's, it's, worth, it's worth something to someone. Yeah, it's also lo lovely and tactile. And I think what we also miss with print, it makes a lot of noise. So it's yeah. cool. I, I'll just show you one more quickly. Yeah, one more quickly, and then I've got one more question for you, which is um, going back to our, our discussion about web to print. So, yeah, go for it. That's an interesting okay, big, one. Big posters. There's mm -hmm. orange ink and CMYK. It's more vibrant than you can imagine. And look, there's another section of it, or a different color change, different color change. Yeah. So once you set it up, you can do thousands. So, yeah, yeah. there you go. So my question is actually going back to when, when when you were in lockdown that you actually created two um separate web to print um solutions so um i'd like to go back and say that had, had you found or has epi berman found that the the need and the and the drive for web to print has escalated during this time um yeah 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 it, and, and, I, and, and I, I, have you kind of like um put these web to prints into like separate pillars one for students or one for a certain kind of application? Now, I'll tell you why it's, I know it's definitely increased because my mother-in-law keeps sending the children uh, funny <laughs> cards with their names on, right? Uh, and she never used to do that. She used to buy them card, nice, cool, creative cards from expensive places. Um, but yeah, what's what I think we have finally had the time to do is create some web to print solutions that have some value to them. So printed on a great press, printed on beautiful paper, and uh, very unique. So not just the run of the mill, throw something in a pot, and whether it's being printed on, you know, a Rico that is what it is, and, or a, let's not talk about some of the others, because you might all get upset with me, but um, <laughs> no, but you know, they all serve a purpose, but they don't look yeah. like true print, because mm. it's toner, it sits on the top. Um, what seems to have happened is people are now interested because they can't get have the same communication with a printer. If you come up with an idea like, you know, go in your garden and take a load, picture of a load of flowers and bushes and create wrapping paper. It's phenomenal. Then everyone's going to go in their garden, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it hasn't even launched yet because the magazine's got a big editorial on it about us. Uh, and once they know how to do that, if, if, if you then say, well, OK, we can then move it on to, you know, anywhere really isn't it you know take picture of your animal or take picture of your friends and you can move that on and i think if you can create something that's a little bit more tactile and nice and colorful and consistent it seems to be picking up and i think uh if you've got a 
bit of a Rolls Royce press, you should uh, you should make good products off it. So yes, it, it's picking up, and the students are very keen on their colleges are shut, their printing presses are down. They need somewhere to get a phys piece. Agencies are saying they want something physical. So a web print solution of literally A2 posters folded, once again, is is amazing for them. Yes, it's it's on the rise. So, I mean, for me, I mean, I, I, I'm very happy for any questions that are that are being put in the in the in the question section to be answered now. But for me, you know, it's the, the passion is 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 sincerely contagious. I could listen and talk to you for hours, um, Paul, <laughs> um, and and he's run away. And the creativity is um, phenomenal. And I don't know why he's run away. It's typical for, of Paul. Oh, yeah. So. There you go. Um, I lost my so, connection. Uh, is there any um, questions, um, guys, from the panel that um, that you would like to um, answer online? Or if there's anybody who would like to raise their hands and ask a question directly to Paul, please don't be shy. Um, let's ask Paul the di direct questions. Okay, if nobody's going to ask a question, I've got another one. Sorry, I'm picking up all the time. It's like, come on, guys, it's here. But I want to know, what's your advice for sales functions trying to drive print in the current environment? Um, I, I think you've got, you've got to just get closer to your clients. I think everyone's got a load of time mm -hmm. on their hands. You know, I tell, I tell you, if, to, be, to be honest with you, if you've got an Indigo, if someone out there's got an Indigo, you know, Go out to all your creative clients or anyone out there that's sitting at home and can't come into work and tell them to create a poster, an A2 poster, and you'll print five of them and you'll give them to them for free. <laughs> Just yeah. do nice things with people. It won't cost you much money because, you know, the click charge on five posters, I, you know, you can steal it from your kids, right? <laughs> so I wouldn't, I, I would start utilizing this time now of, 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 of getting, getting stuff out there, but you can do campaigns. You'll probably right. end up having to send it. But why don't you try and invite people in to be creative, you know, or get them. To, the best thing you can do is get get those clients of yours to say, right, we've got this web to print thing and we're going to get. If you've got children, they can create something and we're going to print them something. One poster. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. it's it's doing little things that people really appreciate once things get back to normal and it building loyalty, I think um, there was a there was a. Um, there, there was a stall down the local market and if you gave him four pound coins he gave you a five pound back no for the first hundred people <laughs> and no one believed it but some people went up there gave him four pounds got five pounds back for the first hundred people he was on the news right he was everywhere yeah. it cost him a hundred pounds because he only did it for the first hundred people sure so just be generous in this time allow people to be creative and try to connect to your clients family and friends and 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 and, and show them that, that you can print one yeah that's what we do we we don't do any more than that we're not you there's no point in running around trying to sell something to everyone at the moment because there's very little activity so try try to not educate but just try to communicate and you know or do some posters that are for the local hospital or anything you like. If you've got Lifeo Press, print something really interesting and then, and then give them away. I know it's tough, but just give them away. It'll all come back. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, what, what, do you, what you send out comes back to you tenfold. So, you know. Yeah, of course it, it does. It, yeah, and help the students, right? You know? And yeah, the student, are... student collaboration is, is vital. I think it's the creative side anyway. And, uh, you know, giving them the free um, kind of like leverage to, to be themselves and to 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 just be creative. Do what they yeah. do best. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I tell you the other thing, uh, you know, I'm 54. Michael Berman is 70, whatever. You know, we think we know everything. We think we're smart. But we're not 20 are we so we might not like what they like but you gotta you gotta you gotta involve them because all their friends are what's potentially going to buy from you one day we've got to get away from this i don't know this fixed in our head that that's what we do and that's all we can do yeah yeah okay i'm gonna yes I of course a quick one. wendy yes of course please with your permission 
Paul, what is the one or two things that you did different post pandemic, post COVID, new normality, if you need to define the one or two things uh, that we, you do well, different? What we do different is we try to get to the end user uh, as opposed to the middle people. Uh, I think that's important. And what we do very different is we are very open to um, spending time being creative on the presses. And, and sometimes we, we will give a proof to someone just to, you know, and, and we are very, very open with our competitors, with our clients. Uh, and I think we, we also encourage people to come and see us and, and see the cool equipment and just, just work with us. So I suppose all we do, we just, we just try to squash anyone in the middle who really is just in the way really but we don't mind them being there but they just gotta like you know allow uh, allow creativity to happen you know and don't say for instance i want 100 a5 flyers or a thousand a5 flyers what's your price you know 50 quid oh i can get it down the road for 30. will you go and get it down the road on a crappy old rico and fine but so so you're not our client that's fine i appreciate that yeah but, you yeah. What would be your advice then, Paul, um, to, to an offset printer who's very nervous to take the next step? Um, I think really what's really important is if you start your salespeople go out and try to convince offset printers to merge the offset into the digital. Yeah. And, uh, and, and by that, we're justified buying an Indigo. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, you do all your maths and you put facts in front of them. And there's a decision to be made and you come up with a you need this amount of jobs on your press to be able to afford to buy an indigo and to be honest with you most of the time when you do that it's accurate and it's affordable because you only need to yeah what you've got to realize if you buy an indigo you're going to do work that you've never done before mm -hmm. it's about buying something and changing the type of work still carry on and still pull the work over to the indigo the smaller runs the or sometimes the bigger runs you know that have to be consistent and need a proof with them but it's about what different things can you do once you've got a digital press and you're entering into a world of i can go into most clients most of the time without even making an appointment right because i can go in there with something different because it's just come off the press and it's interesting if you've just got an offset press, all you can really do is go back to say hello, how are you, how are the children, and all you can really do to encourage them is to say we're cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. So in actual fact, having an Indigo will actually open the doors to all the clients, which are then probably bring more offset work in. Sure. Yeah. So, sure. but you know, it's 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 a it's a it's an investment, of course. It's a big investment. Uh, but you really do need to utilize the press when you get it. You know, you really need to know that you're getting something very special. So even if you only use it 20% of the day doing the special stuff and the rest of the day, you're running it with consistent work and consistent color and so on and so forth. And people don't actually appreciate the color gamut on the Indigo. Everyone converts their files to CMYK and kills the color gamut because it's an offset CMYK. Send your RGB straight to the press if you want to get Right. Proper. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. But it's yeah. tough, but, and especially at the moment, right? It's going to be a bold person that invests at the moment, but it's probably the time to do it. It is, yeah. 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 I know that we're, I'm not sure, uh, Megan, where, where we are on time. So I just want to make sure that everybody gets the opportunity to ask questions um, if they need to. So if there is any other questions, please, you know, as you know, Paul's passion is contagious and he's like, he will. He will chat to us for forever and a day if required. So please use this opportunity to chat to him if there's any questions. Yeah, sure, Wendy. There is, there is still definitely some time for questions. Is there any questions? Sorry, I'm not. I don't see the questions. So I just want to make sure. Is there so any there's, questions? Um, I think the questions um, in the questions section. Um, I think you guys have touched on the mosaic and collage, and um, Paul has touched on what he's doing differently during. Uh, COVID. Is there anything maybe from the HP side? When, Wendy, if, if, 
Wendy, if people don't ask me any questions, I'm going to start telling them how much better the England cricket team is against the South African <laughs> cricket team. So you guys better liven up and ask me a question. Come on, have to go back at me, for God's sake. Rugby, rugby. We're not going to talk about rugby. Rugby, then, well. <laughs> well it's, it, it, the same applies, mate, I'm afraid. I don't think they're any good at rugby either. So come on, guys, come on. I can't wind you up more than that. <laughs> ask me a question. Have a go at me. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure there's um, a lot of rugby supporters on the on the um, <laughs> on the group. Come on, let's throw something at uh, at Paul. Where's Carl when we need him? You, you know, Wendy, I live in Southfields, Wimbledon, right? And it's the biggest dense population of South Africans. There's fifty five thousand South Africans where I live. Wow. Yeah, honestly, but, it's they're everywhere, and they're really good to have around because they're family, they're sporty. Uh, yeah, I don't like their green tops they wear sometimes but <laughs> they're bloody they're good good bunch to have around okay so have, have we got one minute left um i don't know what the time is i just want to say before we run out of time i just want to honestly paul i want to give you the hugest of hugs and and say thank you very very much for your time i can't i can't tell you every time i sit with you and speak to you i just get full of such positive energy um um, and I just hope that everybody on the on the actual webinar has enjoyed it. Um, please feel free to reach out to to any of us on the panel um, uh, if you want any further information. I'm very happy to to share print samples, talk to you about print, um, and let's keep print alive and keep it going. So, Paul, once again, thank you very very much. I honestly can't tell you how thankful well, I hope, we are. Well, I I love to come back to Africa and uh, talk. Yes, anytime, please do. So. So just shout. Thank you. I love yeah. it. Oh, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you to our panelists and to the attendees. Uh, you can watch the recording of the event and other informative webinars on africaprint.com live. Thank you, everyone, and take care. Thanks, Megan. Take care, everybody. All right. Thanks for.